we gather this day after many storms. Many storms both in our physical world and in our lives as well. And I can guarantee you there's so much trauma within our communities and within PEI and Nova Scotia, uh, people's lives being upset. And so today is a Thanksgiving day that rem hopefully will remind us that even in the midst of all of this, God is with us. God's love surrounds us and the source of our being, the strength of our love is grounded within the God whose winds or storms cannot destroy. May our day, this day of thanksgiving and celebration be a reminder of that. Even when the winds blow hard outside physically, the winds blow hard in people's lives as well. And today we, we extend our thoughts and our prayers to Brenda, and Ryan and Marie, and Declan and Rhea in the death of Brenda's two brothers last week, Harold and Gerald. So our thoughts are very much with you today, and this community holds you both in prayer and in thoughts and, uh, and in love. And certainly to all who have experienced loss in their lives, we want you to know that God is with us and that the, the, the love of this community surrounds and holds each and every one in the journeys that are sometimes very, very challenging. I'd want to thank Linda, magical, wonderful, creative Linda for doing these beautiful <laughs> decorations for us this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I was thinking, on the, I left this morning thinking, oh, I forget to re forgot to reach out to someone around this. And of course, Linda's always, uh, she always comes through with this. I, and uh, so thank you, Linda, very much for your gift and for sharing it with us this morning. Um, just a reminder that, uh, oh, just a, <laughs> Uh, the, the dinner theater resulted in a profit of $13,665.49. So that's a, that's a wonderful, yeah, that's just, that's just wonderful. And the dedication work that went into that and the fun and to those who participated in seating these uh, chairs and, and munching away at this beautiful food. Thank you to all. Uh, the uh, joint UCW will meet this Tuesday, October the 11th at 7 o'clock here in the church, 7.30. Um, Central Queens United, uh, the annual, the, another annual roast beef takeout supper this time, and that's for October 22nd, so please spread the word. Um, yes, please, come forward. Yes, why not? Since you interrupted my flow of thought, I mean, you know. <coughs> As he's already told you, it's on the 22nd. Just to remind you, the tickets are the same price. Uh, team leaders have tickets, but as you know, Lois was passing them out this morning. So if you can't get a ticket from your team leader, then call Debbie Ling or Lois Lessoness. They do have tickets. And the dessert list is out there, so if you think you could sign up on that, it would be appreciated. And I'm looking for workers, and I've got the sheet at the door. So get there early so you don't get disappointed <laughs> on trying to get a job. Thank you. Thank you, Cecil. Uh, the, and um, we did go out for a little walk last week, the uh, uh, Central Queens Emmaus Walkers. We got a little ways up along the trail until the trees became a little too thick. Across the house, so we didn't continue, but it was a good little walk. And George Mason wants to thank you folks for supplying so many of those little tabs. Uh, and you can read about it in the bullet, and if you don't know about it, those little tabs are uh, just wonderful. So George says thank you for your wonderful dedication to that. And I forgot at the beginning to say welcome. <laughs> Welcome. It's good if you're visiting with us. A warm welcome, uh, certainly to those as well who are sharing through our um, uh, Facebook Live. A warm welcome to you as well. And we hope that uh, 
Um, you are warm at home, and uh, I pray that you have power at home. So, uh, these are our announcements. Are there any other announcements that I didn't share or didn't make it to the bulletin? Yes, Linda, please. <coughs> <coughs> If anybody noticed, there's a cart in the lobby with jigsaw puzzles. Feel free to take them, enjoy them. If you have extras and you want to add to the pile, go for it. Enjoy. Excellent. And with winter just around the corner, what a wonderful thing to do to put, to, uh, put together some puzzles. Well, there was once this person who did such amazing things and wonderful things that people followed him. And he didn't just stay around those people who were not, who life was really good, but he also hung out with where life wasn't really good. And he made lots of friends. And he reminded them that, you know what? God is awesome. And God is love. And God cares for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. And then one day... One day, they were talking amongst themselves, and they said, who is this person? And they asked him, and he simply said, I am the light. simple, isn't it? I am the light. And over the last little while where we've been actually in darkness, we certainly know what it is to appreciate the light. And maybe the electricity has not come on on our homes or we've lived without light for a little while. The light of God never goes out. The light of God surrounds us. The warmth and the love is to each and all. Let us take just a few moments to realize and to appreciate the light that surrounds us this day. <clears throat> your maker come all ye We gather this morning to celebrate the harvest home. We gather with hearts filled with gratitude as our senses take in all that we've received. For the bountiful blessings in praise and thanksgiving, for the fruit of all creation.
And I'd invite you to share with me in the prayer, opening prayer. From our hearts, with our hands, through our voices, in our love, we thank you, God, for every sunrise and sunset, for every smile and tear, for every moment that has passed, and for every moment yet to come, may our thanksgiving fill the world with gratitude and joy. And with Jesus we share in this very ancient prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is not um, a read psalm, it's a, it's a sung psalm. So I'm going to invite everybody just to be seated for the singing of this psalm together. In the Psalm 100. You're sounding so good, and we're all limbered up here to sing again, <laughs> and uh, I'd invite you to sing, let us stand together and sing, if you're able to stand. Uh, we praise you for the sun, and we'll sing the first two verses, and then I invite the children to come forward, and we'll have a time together at the front. <clears throat> Please be seated. I invite your children to come on up with me here. I know. It's... Come on up. And if you're, 
If you want to drag a parent along, that's fine as well, or a guardian, or a friend. There we go. I, I won't bite. I'm pretty, I'm pretty easy like that. I don't like sitting on the floor. There we go. Going to come up? There we go. I know, it's been a long time, and you guys are new. Yeah. Anyway, can, uh, hopefully you can see me. Well, maybe that's the reason why you're coming, not coming up. You can see me. But anyway, that's great. Well, I'm glad you came up. I know, it's sort of, when you're new in a place, it's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah. This old guy with a, a nightie on, it looks like. He's saying, what are you wearing your nightie at the church for, Greg? <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, we love to, we, that's a children's time a little later on. That's right. <laughs> well, it's really, really good to see you. And um, this morning I thought that uh, we'd be uh, thinking about something called Thanksgiving. <gasps> Thanksgiving. Anybody know what Thanksgiving is? What's that? I, now, turkey day. Walk. No, so this is not a. This is this is chicken. The chicken goes walk, walk, walk. Where does the turkey go? Gobble, gobble, gobble. Is that what they do? Yeah, that's right. So it's turkey, and so it's turkey day. So does that mean that you're out running around after turkeys? No, you're not running around after turkeys. Must be chickens then, is it? No chicken, not run after chickens. So why is it a turkey day? Any idea? It's time to say thank you to the farmers. That's right. Thank you to the farmers for their bountiful crop and for God who provides all this wonderful fertile land and all this stuff so that the farmers and people who are really gifted in gardening can grow things. And it's a, it's a time to say thank you. Now, it's funny because I have Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving, I don't always say Thanksgiving. Doesn't always, you ever think about that word? It doesn't always make sense. But if you turn it around, what do you get if you change it around? Giving thanks. Giving thanks. You got it. That's right. Today is about giving Thanks. Wow. And how do we give thanks? What about, I said, hey there, thanks for coming up with me this morning because I'd be all alone and I'd have big alligator tears running down my cheeks. And they're big alligator tears. So thank you for coming up. What are other ways that we can give thanks this morning in our worship we had prayers and we said thank you God and sometimes if we're outside and we're playing on the playground and we see uh, and someone is nice to us or someone says hey you want to I've, I've swung on the swing for a little while would you like to swing and what do we say well thank you that was pretty awesome and so today is just a reminder <clears throat> that you know what? We have lots of stuff, lots of things. And sometimes we think, oh, well, it's just, we just have this. And sometimes it's, time, it's good just to say, thank you, God. Or thank you, mom or dad. Or thank you, the person who's really awesome in your life that's caring for you. Or thank you if you have a sibling, a sister or brother. And say, hey, thank you. You're cool. So today, we remember all the goodness God gives to us. And we say, thank you. And you know, we can spread that all around the world. And all around our communities. And in our families by saying, thank you. Because you're awesome. Would you, and would you, would you like to have a prayer this morning? Let's have a prayer. Hey, God. Thank you for this awesome sunny day. Thank you for this awesome sunny day. Thank you for the cool folk who came here today. 
Thank you, God, for our lives. For the food in which we eat. For the farmers who, who plant the food. And thank you for all the harvesters who dig the dig the dig <laughs> dig up the food. <laughs> so much to be thankful for, God. So much to be thankful for, God. We talk to you later. Oh man. Now there's going to be a Sunday school. If you'd like to go to the Sunday school, and I think it's cooking, is it? Cooking. Yeah, there's going to be some cooking. And as you follow these, ga these gals here, you could go out and hang out out there. If you, would you like to do that? Yeah, would you like to do that? I need a hand up. <laughs> easy sitting down there. <laughs> no, no, that's right. It gets a little more difficult. I find that. Yeah, yeah. It's something about this getting old thing, isn't it? Yeah. This day we set aside Thanksgiving. And it provides us an opportunity for us to take stock of God's blessings and to reflect on our response to God's love that's toward us and with us and surrounding us. So I'd invite you to share with me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Our Creator, you have made an intricate and diverse world and set us to cultivate it reverently and responsibly. Our Creator, you have made a world of abundance and intend for us to share so that all, all people may have their daily bread. Forgive us when we lose a sense of hospitality and unity. Our Creator, you have sent us Jesus, the bread of life, to satisfy our spiritual hunger and thirst. Forgive us when we do not respond to his justice and mercy. Every day, let us celebrate your goodness. Every day, let us shape our very lives by focusing our thoughts and our actions on what is beautiful, what is worthy, what is kind, and what is worthy of praise. Bring to us what we forget that you make all things possible. We have offered to God the concerns of our hearts and minds. We trust that God not only hears our prayers, but in God's almighty wisdom and awareness of our needs does answer our prayers and draws close to us. We are a forgiven people. We are a liberated people. God has brought us to a spacious place where we find ourselves. God calls us to praise God and to commit our resources to the well-being of earth, mother earth, and community life. In gratitude to God, whose love knows no bounds, let us respond by giving our tithes and our offerings. And um, we give as we are able, and we give as we are called. Our morning offering will now be presented. And I'd invite you to stand. <clears throat> to Oh.
And let us share in the offertory prayer. Loving God, we come to you in thanksgiving, knowing that all we are and all we have are gifts from you. In faith and in love, help us to do your will. We offer to you this day all the facets of our lives. May we grow in wisdom and insight to understand your will for us. We offer gifts of time, talent, and possessions to you to reflect our love for you and our neighbor. Help us to reach out to others as you, our God, reach out to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And at this time, we'll have a reading from our sacred scriptures and uh, Deuteronomy in the, in the Hebrew scriptures at this time. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 26, 1 to 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come to the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down to Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voices and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs of wonder. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the, God, of the ground that you, our Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. <clears throat> and let us continue the hearing of scripture now taken from the Christian scriptures from Luke chapter 17 and I'm reading verses 11 through to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten leopards approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And they, and they went, and they were made clean. Then one of them when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. May these readings, reflections from Scripture find a place within our heart and within our lives. And may in these readings we sense the presence of the Holy, the love of God. Amen. <clears throat>
Let us bow for a moment of prayer. Creator God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our hope and our salvation. Amen. One would think that Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Sunday, would be an easy Sunday to prepare worship. There's so much goodness that happens, it seems, and so much happening that, uh, that we're accustomed to. All I have to do is, of course, look around the country, to look around the island, even with all that devastation that has happened with the last hurricane, look at this community and realize that we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. And probably in the scheme of the whole world, we're pretty, pretty rich. Indeed, we live in one of the most affluent countries in the world. Even those who are poor do not have the same level of poverty that we see in other countries. Thanksgiving Sunday, however, never sits easy with me. I suspect it has something to do with the fact that I have so much by the world's standards. What I'm doing, well, and of course, part of that is what am I doing about it? What exactly are we giving thanks for? What exactly am I giving thanks for in having all that I have? I'm well aware that Thanksgiving has its roots in the good that comes from the earth, the good that comes from God. The early settlers were thankful at harvest time because a good crop meant that they would eat during winter. Life for another season was secure. The gift of a good crop was attributed to God's kindness. That thinking makes good sense until there was a poor crop and there was a season of death. But that's another sermon for another day. I was speaking with a very wise elderly woman a couple weeks ago during one of my visits. And she reflected on her long life and she said... I don't say I had a good life. She said, I say I, I, or she said, she said, when I say I, it feels like it's all about me. I, re I prefer to see my life in how I have shared and given life and how others have given and shared their lives with me. Life is not all about me. Sometimes thanksgiving can be all about how God has blessed me, how God is so good to me, why God has blessed me so much. I think we all realize that where we live is an accident of our birth. And this accident has been good for us. What now? What do we do with that abundance? I don't think it's enough for us simply to thank God for the abundance we've been given accidentally. There has to be more on our part. In a Bible study entitled Saving Jesus that I put on a few years ago, there was a discussion about how Jesus has been understood or probably misunderstood for over 2,000 years. The movement of following Jesus moved from right action to right thinking. To be a follower of the way, follower of Jesus, all you needed to do was to have the right thoughts and the right beliefs. Believing properly would uh, and believe properly, and your skids would be greased for heaven. Think improperly, and your skids would be greased, well, to other areas. We still get some denominational thought around that, which leads me to think our worship of thanksgiving is never enough. There needs to be action of thanksgiving as well. Our one Sunday a year at harvest time is not enough. Our reflections on our lives and giving thanks 
is simply not enough. There has to be more. I keenly remember when Ellen and I decided to, to have children. It was fun preparing for, arri- for our arrival of our, our first child, our new child. Scary as well, and all that we had planned really, yeah, well, that was out the door. But we were prepared, we thought. Who was ever prepared for a first child in particular? Patrick, our son, was born, and we were very thankful for this first little guy as we were for our second little guy, but being thankful really wasn't enough. There were times along the way which is, what have we gotten ourselves into here? (laughs) The birth, which was a big event, was only one event in a long line of events on this journey, and our boys are in their late 20s now. Patrick was born... What then? There needed to be some actions. We needed to be doing stuff that we didn't even realize we needed to be doing. For life and love to continue, we needed to be active in his life. And as any parent knows, there's a lot of action along the life of a child as they grow up and even as they become adult. The birth is the tip of the iceberg. The journey is that massive amount of iceberg that we never see. We can see the same process journey when the the water of baptism is poured. It's a moment of celebration when we baptize a child. It's a time of giving thanks, of celebrating life, the joy and thanksgiving of a moment. These moments open up our lives to actions of love and care. We do this not out of duty, but out of love. Our lives extend beyond the day of thanksgiving into living and loving actions expressed in community. Expressions of love truly reflected being a thank-filled people. Our gospel teller, Luke, shares an interesting story with us this morning. Jesus heals ten lepers, Jesus instructs them to go to the temple in Jerusalem as the law required. Nine of them obey Jesus and head off to Jerusalem just as they've been directed. But one of the cleansed lepers disobeys Jesus. Disobeys Jesus. And instead returns to thank him. Ten behaved like good lepers, good Jews. Only one behaved like a person in love. The nine did what was expected, fulfilled expectations, followed the rules. We are good at following expectations. We are good at following rules. I'm good at that. I do it all the time. There's a sense of expectation about attending church, doing the right things. That's not bad, but that in in and of itself is never enough. Our thankfulness cannot be dependent upon what It's in our bank account or what's on our table this Thanksgiving. Our thankfulness is to the source of life itself. Take away all the stuff we name as good and allow ourselves to give thanks for a love that calls us to continually give love back into our world, into the lives that we meet. Being thankful is never enough. Being thankful is just a reminder that we are a people who need to pass it on, to share it, to give it away, and to help and to journey with those fine people that we rub shoulders with on a regular basis and some strangers that we rub shoulders with that we don't even know. May our ways of thanksgiving be a way of giving of ourselves and realizing the gift of God that surrounds us, all of us. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And may you enjoy the fruits of this season. May you remember the love with which those seeds have been planted to produce the food that you will eat. And for the persons that surround you, may your love pour out. So let it be. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, on this harvest weekend, we thank you for all things great and small, for moments of wonder, and for ordinary exchanges which fill our lives with meaning and offer us a sense of well being. May our friends see us, see in us, the signs of a grateful heart, the signs of a God whose name is goodness. Generous God, as we give thanks for the harvest of the earth and all the goodness that sustains us, we pray that you will show us how to live respectfully in creation and protect all that is precious to you. Wherever harvests have been disappointing, show us how to share what has been produced so that no one goes hungry. God of all goodness, we ask that you hear our prayer. Generous God, we pray for the good of your earth and world and the common good of this community and the communities where we call home, where there's strife and hostility between peoples and nations. Inspire leaders to show wisdom and courage in their, in their decision-making. We pray for people and places hit hard by flood or fire, tornado, hurricane, epidemic, or earthquake, or war. We pray, O oh God, today, especially for the folk in this area of this world, particularly in Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island, those who have experienced for the first time the winds that were so heavy, and the destruction that no one seemed to escape. We pray for those, O oh God, who do not have electricity, for those who find it psychologically and physically demanding. May you, O oh God, be near to them. May neighbors and friends reach out to them and give generosity, compassion, and may they know your presence and your love through the words and the love of those around them. God of all goodness, we know that you hear our prayer. Generous God, we pray for our neighbors and those of whom numbers who are facing health challenges. For those who are experiencing the death of loved ones. For those who are worried about loved ones who have undergone surgery or have medical issues. For those who seem that the storms of life, whether physical, psychological, just continue to keep coming in these difficult times and in this season, we ask, oh God, that you surround them in your love. We pray for family and friends under stress that you be with them as they try to piece back the brokenness within their lives, within their workplaces, on their farms. Make us generous in compassion. Make us generous in understanding. Make us generous in embracing and holding each other in these times. And in all of this, O oh God, may we learn to give thanks. 
for your love that neither storm nor wind nor illness can take away. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our concluding hymn is Let All Things Now Living. Uh, and I'd invite you, to, if you're able, to stand and share in the singing of this hymn. <clears throat> us with gratitude, O God. From you all blessings flow. To you all gratitude shall return. Fuel us as a gracious people, full of your spirit, led by your way, overflowing with compassion and power to shape our lives, to shape our world for the good and the love and the care of all. Go now in the peace and the love of Almighty God that surrounds you, that animates you, that gives you life. So let it be. Amen. <clears throat>